So we have three problems here, and in the first one, we, have, we want to find the height of a cylinder with a radius of three inches, find the radius of a sphere and the height of a cone with a, a radius of three inches. These are three separate problems, and for all of them, we're assuming the same thing. And this is the key to the question, that for each of these shapes, that the volume is about two, oops, the volume is about 250 cubic inches. All right, it's an approximation for some of them because if you think about it, we're dealing with the sphere and the cone and the cylinder, which means we're dealing with uh, our beloved number pi, which is irrational, and that forces the approximation of the volume there, which is a whole rich conversation. I mean, why do we have to approximate volume, and to what degree do we approximate it, and how come we can't find the exact volume of these shapes? Well, it's related to this concept of pi, and it presents some inter interesting questions. But here... We're focusing on how to find the height of a cylinder and if we know the radius and the volume. So we're working backwards. How do we do that? Well, let's look at the formula for the volume of a cylinder. I'll, I'll write it up here. It says the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared h. So here we're given the volume, and that's 250. I'm just plugging it in here to the formula, plugging it right in. It equals pi times the radius squared. Well, what's the radius? It's 3 inches. So 3 squared is 9 and times h. So here, really what we're doing is we're solving for h, right? They want us to find the height. So if I think about this in an intuitive way, this is saying that take the height and multiply it by 9 pi, and you'll get the volume. So there's a simple inverse operation here. Just like if I said 3 times 4 is equal to 12, well, 3 times 4 is 12, that also means that 12 divided by 4 is 3. So here, if I have h times 9 pi, it's not as friendly as 3 times 4, but it equals 250. So I know the same thing applies with the inverse operations here. To undo multiplication, we divide. And 250 divided by um, 9 pi will equal our height. So we have to approximate here because we're dealing with pi. They don't tell us to what degree to approximate. So for all these problems, I'm going to say, I'm going to round pi to 3. You could easily round it to 3.14. It's probably a more reasonable choice, but I'm going to use 3. So what do we do? Well, 250 divided by 9 pi. First establish that 9 pi, in this case, is 27, right? We're rounding pi to 3. So we're taking 250 and dividing by 27. So the, the volume, of, excuse me, the height of the cylinder is 9 point about 26 or it's repeating 9.259 259 and then this 6 here is just being rounded by the calculator but here we can write 9 wait let me get that again yeah there it is point two five, sorry 259 right repeating so this is about the height of the cylinder and all we did there was solve for h and the next problem we're doing the same thing but notice that with, with the sphere, once you're given the volume, you know quite a bit. Right? You don't need to also be given the radius um, to find the radius or to find the height. Uh, part of the reason is that the, the volume of a sphere, you can think of it as 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So there are only two variables we're dealing with in this equation, the volume and the, and the radius. And now we know the volume. So we know that 250 is equal to fourth, oops, 4 thirds, right? pi times the radius cubed. This one's a little bit tougher to deal with, but um, intuitively, some of, the, some of the aspects of it remain the same as the one before. This time we're taking the radius cubed, so it's one number, times this number, 4 thirds pi, and it gets 250, right? So the same principle, we can undo this whole process by division. So I can set up 250 divided by, uh, I'll write it as a, well, I'll write as a division sign, divided by 4 thirds pi. And now will give us the radius cubed. So how do we do this? Well, if I'm substituting 3 for pi, this is really like 250 divided by 12 thirds, right? 4 times 3 is 12. And 12 thirds is just 4. So now it becomes a little bit friendlier to work with. What is 250 divided by 250 divided by 4? Let's see, 250 divided by 4, 62 and a half. So this means that the radius cubed is equal to 62 and a half. 
So now we have to find the cubed root of 62 and a half. That's our goal now, right? Because the radius times the radius times the radius is 62 and a half. So how do we do that? Well, algebraically, I would just show it the cubed root of both sides, right? 62 and a half is equal to the radius. So <laughs> this, I mean, there are calculator functions to do this. I, I'm, my calculator function does not have it. And there are processes for approximating the cubed root. But here, I mean, we don't really want to get too much into that. Maybe I should, but I, I just feel like the cubed root is a number times itself three times. That's about 62.5. So we can begin to estimate where the, what this is, and that's a simple process, right? Just like with square roots. Um, for example, I know that 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Okay, so 62.5 is, is smaller than that, so the radius has to be less than 4. But 3 times 3 times 3, that's 27. So 62.5 is between these two numbers. It's between 64 and 27, so the radius is between 64 and 27 of this, right? Uh, excuse me, is between... 4 and 3, right? It's, it's closer to 4 than 3, but it's between these two numbers. It's not between 64 and 27. I don't know why I said that. I, the number itself, 62.5, is between them, but we're looking for the cubed root. So the cubed root is between 4 and 3, so, and it's very close to 4. So it's, a, it's okay in, in, to base on the problem. We don't know what they want here, but I would say the radius is about 4, right? About 4 cent, um, inches in this case. It's close. It's less than four, but it's close to it. And then last, we have a cone. Find the height of a cone with a radius of three inches. How do we deal with cones? Well, a cone is just a third of the volume of a cylinder, right? It's a third of pi r squared h. And we know the volume, right? So the volume is 250. The radius is three, so three squared is nine. And that's nice because nine times a third is just three. So we have 3 pi h equals 250. We're estimating pi as 3. So now we have something nice and easy to work with. 3 times pi, or 3 times 3, is 9. 9 times something is 250. Working backwards, we can find the height. So the height is equal to 250 divided by 9. Right, we're just going backwards there, because 9 times something is 250. And what's that? Well, let's just work it out quickly. 250 divided by 9. 27 and 7 ninths, or 0.7 repeating. So 20, h is equal to 27 and 7 ninths for the height in inches. Um, so for each of these, I hope I didn't forget my, my, my units I did here. It's, this should have been 9.259 inches. But the point is, if you know two of the variables in any equation, you can solve for the third, right? Here we know the volume and, and radius. Excuse me. If here in the cone, we knew the, the volume and the radius so we could find the height. With the, cylinder, with the cylinder, we knew the same thing. We knew the volume, right, and the radius squared, so we found the height. In the sphere, though, there's only one, there's only two variables, and we knew one of them, so we could solve for the other. It's just a, a general algebraic intuition that you'll develop as you work through these kind of problems. Thanks.